Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and we are discussing on the Saturn Ketu conjunction. This is the part 2 and we have Sanati with us. So if you have not watched the part 1, amazing, he explained very beautifully that how and he gave the dates also and how this is going to affect. So anything else you would like to say, you can continue on the natal planets. If you wish, or you are speaking something about the Jupiter and Venus that link because both are involved in this. Yes, and when it comes to Venus, there's a lot of planetary wars. We just experienced the Jupiter-Venus planetary war. But something which is very interesting, another transit which is also going on uh, right around the same time that this one is going on is that Jupiter is going to the end of yes. it's going to Jaisthanakshatra. It's going to tap its foot in the door into Mula Nakshatra. Then it's going to immediately go retrograde. So Saturn is retrograde for a long time. Jupiter is retrograde for a long time. And these planets will be retrograde at the same time. So there will be a lot of retrograde action during this period. Also, while Saturn and K2 are being active, uh, during the summer, Rahu and Mars are going to conjoin. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> So when Rahu and Mars aspect Saturn and K2, this is going to be, and I, and I just discussed this with some other astrologers, Mercury will join Rahu and Mars. And, oh, Mercury, okay. and Mercury will be in its natural sign. Mm -hmm, so yes. Mercury will be providing protection of that transit. Okay. But there's almost one month before Mercury joins. <laughs> so this can be very explosive time. This can be very uh, impulsive time. This can be uh, very, you know, sort of uh, in indulgent and giving into the temptations. And it's right in the heart of summer. So th it shows some recklessness is, is all I want to say is it shows a little bit of recklessness uh, during this period. And then Mercury coming back in and being like, okay, I got to get things together here. But um but yeah, that Rahu Mars transit is going to be. We also have two eclipses. We have um, July eclipse uh, and we have December eclipse and both are solar eclipse. Um, so this is very interesting is uh, the eclipses during this uh, period. And it's important to note with the eclipses that it's going to be on July 2nd in Gemini, okay? And it's going to be uh, heavily affecting uh, Ardra. So this is going to be a very powerful time period. Um, eventually, uh, there will be a, 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 an intensity that will move on. Now, the December uh, eclipse, which happens on, I just want to double check my, that I have the correct on date. Christmas. It's exactly December on Christmas. 26. Yes. And that will be in Mula Nakshatra. Wow. <laughs> and I guess there are six planets in Sagittarius that day. Yes. And, and so there's like an even further discussion, which is the evolution from Mula to mm. Purvashada. Um, because um, that's something which we're going to be experiencing with the eclipse. In other words, you can't, uh, if there's this alignment to the highest guru within, like this highest Jupiterian energy, then you have to go through Mula Nakshatra, which is ruled by Ketu, in order to get to Purvashada. So it's the natural evolution, Mula, Purvashada, and Jaista before that. So when you have this uh, evolution from Mula, that's getting to the root. That's finding the answer, right? So, so, you, so through Mula Nakshatra, you now know what you need to do. But that doesn't mean that you've done anything. <laughs> so that's why you need Purvashada, which says, okay, you know what you need to do. And now you're actually going to do it. You're, you're going, and that's going to not only help you fulfill your dharma, but help you achieve liberation, moksha. Um, and, and, and because of Ketu's influence of mula, there's, the, we, we all know the ultimate goal is the mahasamadhi. That's the ultimate moksha realization. 
but we're human beings here, so we're still afraid to die. So it's not time to think in this such a esoteric way when we're thinking about this transit, because yes, maybe we can achieve Maha Samadhi, probably not. So, <laughs> so there is this, but maybe someone who had this strong evolutionary energy may take their Maha Samadhi during this time. They say that the Gemini Sagittarius, uh, the Mula Ardra axis, uh, is the site of Kundalini. It's the site of the universe. It's the, sometimes called the center of the galaxy or the center of the universe. Yes, galactic center. That's where, all the, that's where all the prana is. That's where all the energy is. That's where all the shakti is. That's where all the kundalini is. Um, but yeah, so, so I feel like there's this also with Mula Nakshatra kind of dancing with Purvashada Nakshatra and saying, okay, once you find out what needs to be removed or how your life needs to be, what, which might be what you want your future to be, what you want the rest of your life to be, once you start to begin clarity about that, then the evolution of Purvashada, removing all of the obstacles. And sometimes Purvashada is called the elephant tusk, which is connected yeah, yeah. to the Lord Ganesha. The removing of all of the obstacles. So, 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 so you find out what you need to do through Mula to advance to the next level but you aren't able to do that because of certain obstacles. So may we pray to Lord Ganesha, Om Ganganapataye Namaha, for the great Guru Dev to remove all of the obstacles, uh, which is uh, the Purvashada Nakshatra, this evolution into the moral and the ethical uh, character, not only just knowing what is your path, but actually striving for that, being that, setting the bar high and meeting the bar. So, so, but, 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 but these eclipses will show holes in the character. I, 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 I especially, I, I think, and when December comes after this long transit in Purvashada, there, there is this Mula Nakshatra eclipse. Yes. Classic it is. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so you think, so you, so you, so you learn the lesson and now you're trying to be that better person. And here's the temptation again. Here's the temptation or the thing that was holding you back, the obstacle that was holding you back. Here it is to show its face one more time to see if you can really let it go. Wow. <laughs> and this new year is going to be a ride, I guess. <laughs> yes. It just reminds me of the American saying, um, push and pull. Push and oh. pull. Uh, that there's a push and a pull that's going on. This, this year of 2019, it's like the churning of the divine water. It's the, um, yes. it, it's the churning of the divine ocean. It's the push and the pull, for sure. Yeah, and another interesting thing, what I think is regarding this transit. Now, Rahu is uh, transiting in Punarvasunakshatra, as we were you know, just discussing before our talk. <laughs> so many things which we used to do once upon a time, those things which we are, we are again doing them now, at least in my case and so many other people who I know it's happening. So what I uh, understand, especially when Mars and Rahu will conjoin, you know, so that time it can happen that, as you very beautifully explained, you know, that there are some things which we have to let go, which is not serving our higher purpose. But uh, when Mars and Rahu conjoin, then what I think is that so many of those addictions or you know addictions not to alcohol or to you know the vices, but anything basically attachments, you know, yeah. those things can again come back on the surface, and that will be the challenge. That can we stay away from them or we indulge in it, you know, or we again fall prey to it. And there, the uh, because now only Mars is not there. Saturn is also involved in this. Yeah. So Saturn and Mars, whenever I have seen, I mean, whenever they are conjunct or they are mutually aspecting, you know, seven houses apart, they cause a lot of strain. Strain in a way that you want to do something, which is Mars, but Saturn doesn't let you do that. Or he lets you do it with a lot of patience. 
so i guess in summer around you know i think mars rahu are going to be conjunct by june around that time if i'm correct june yeah. uh, may june around that time i guess so that time i think it will be really tested that uh, basically i think this you know that your purity will be tested your determination your your ability to stay uh, true because gemini has this nakshatra punarvasu because gemini is exactly the opposite of sagittarius Mm-hmm. No, so in uh, because and Gemini is the original third house, which they say is the Bhavat Bhavam of the eighth house. It is the eighth from the eighth. So eighth house shows addictions, and if you know the concept of Arudhas, it's just very easy to understand that Arudha is the physical manifestation of any house. So the Arudh, the natural Arudha of the eighth house is the third house because that's where you know the things manifest. and that is why because gemini has these uh, nakshatras like ardra and punarvasu especially punarvasu we can have this tendency to go into addiction again and again we leave it you know oh i will not uh, smoke the cigar i have left it you know or oh, i just left smoking today morning you know <laughs> that's what people tell me sometimes i mean that's just an example but depending on which houses mars is ruling uh, in our chart that effect can be more and what i think also uh, the houses which saturn is ruling in the chart those houses will also undergo uh, intense cleansing not because it is in purva shada or sag but because it is with ketu and i think during this time what will happen is our de- our actual detachment will be tested because saturn is in a way karaka for detachment also it's like saying that you work hard but then you let the results come of its own accord as you know krishna says in the gita that don't focus on the results arjuna you focus on the actions you can only do your actions you cannot <laughs> get the results i give you the results you don't <laughs> so ketu can you know i think uh, related to the houses depending on your ascendant where saturn is ruling and for the new comers and beginner saturn rules number 10 and 11 capricorn and aquarius so wherever these two signs are falling you know the lord of that house is saturn and those houses uh, what what i have seen when ketu conjuncts any planet like last year mars ketu was conjunct so what i felt during that transit was that see now there's a question to be asked now okay your dasha is there you know venus jupiter saturn whatever your dasha is there keep the dasha aside for some time but the question is why in transit are these two planets coming together <laughs> i mean ketu and saturn or ketu and mars they were six together for six months yeah. last year i, I yes. think for saturn and ketu that our that our planet needs to be cleansed yes that our planet that we are all so full of um i one way to describe it i think is selfishness and both k2 and saturn is uh against the ego saturn uh removed the ego because saturn is the ruler of time and we always want time to happen on our own time but saturn is god's will of time so yes yes and and, and k2 remove our ego by actually removing ahankar removing the separative identity there is the removal the separation of the i the separation of the i am so this 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 energy is is very purifying uh it's like it's like i feel like the um, the divine uh source is trying to purify us and it has been some time since we've been purified like this and one thing that i think is very interesting which i discussed in the transit summit there's been some mention of the during the rahu mars saturn k2 the potential of terrorism oh okay this has been mentioned as a possibility another thing which i thought was interesting to mention is that rahu and mercury are transiting gemini which both of the nakshatras and gemini is to do with technology and 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 one thing that you see building in our society is addiction to technology as as a whole society we are addicted to our phones there every comedian likes to joke about it but the truth is is that the addiction is very sad 
And that's just one layer of the addiction. There's addiction to internet. There's addiction to email. There's addiction that, that they use the computer to escape their reality. That the life on the computer, whether it's a game or social media, they're escaping their actual life responsibilities. So, so, I, so I agree 100% with what you're saying, and, when I, and I think there's going to be some purification or cleansing from our addiction to technology, or I would like to think that. And this is coming from a Rahu guy who loves to use technology, but, but, but I also see that as, as, a, as a humanity, we are falling victim to this dependency and addiction on technology which is not the positive for the beneficial side. So I think there needs to be some cleansing uh, with, the, with our relationship with technology as well. Yeah, and as I was saying regarding this only that whenever Ketu conjoins some planet in transit, what, what I have noticed is like regarding the conjunction of Mars, no? Because Ketu is a planet which is even farther than Saturn in a way that it takes you even way, way beyond what Saturn can take you. you know? It's like the farthest because it takes you to a different realm only. He's the only planet which does it. Saturn, Saturn can at max do what? He can bring you from the sky to the ground <laughs> yeah. by giving you suffering. But he doesn't say that get out of this world. <laughs> but Ketu, Ketu does that. So what I have uh, seen is that when these when ketu conjoins any planet in transit regarding the houses that it lords just before the transit you will you will have this experience if you know astrology then you will know it more i guess so what happens is i have seen just before the conjunction happens of ketu with any other planet there's a lot of plans which we make regarding that planet like for example last year ketu was conjunct mars so whichever houses Mars is ruling in your chart, you can check last year. You would have made enormous plans. Oh, I will do this, then I will do this, I will do this, 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 this and that. And then Ketu comes and all the plans, they are like completely shattered. Why? Because he's telling you that even if these plans succeed, you will not be happy later on. Even if you get what you want, you know, like uh, there are many places where uh, they say that uh, it's, there's a saying, you know, operation is successful, but the patient is dead. That you, you did something so nice, but the end result was not achieved. So Ketu wants to teach us that lesson that suppose now uh, Saturn Ketu is conjunct. So whichever house Saturn rules in the chart. So now, because now the conjunction is going to happen. So now is that, you know, pre-conjunction time. So now you may be thinking, oh, uh, suppose Saturn is your 10th Lord. I will do this in career. I will do that. Saturn is 7th Lord. I will do this in marriage, that in marriage, or I will find somebody to get married. But when Ketu will conjoin, then you will start feeling as maybe none of my plans are working, depending on what dasha you are running through. And even if some of the plans will work, then you will you will be surprised that it worked out in a way which you didn't expect. But I have seen that the moment you tell yourself and tell the universe that enough of it, I am not doing any more plans <laughs> no, or at least I'm not obsessed with the results. Then immediately you will see the results start starting to come. This, this I have observed so many times whenever Ketu conjoins sun, because now Ketu and sun are conjoined now. So even then I experienced whichever houses sun, sun is ruling in the chart, you know, regarding those houses also. So the biggest lesson, I guess, is that we need to let go of our expectations of our, you know, actions. That doesn't mean that we do not plan, but things may not always be the way we want them to be. And as one of my gurus once said that, Things don't happen the way you want, but things happen the way it should happen. <laughs> so if you look back always in your time, you know that, okay, maybe you thought I wanted this, but it didn't happen. You know? But then they say that when something is not happening, it means that even if that would have happened, you would have not fit in that circle. Like sometimes people uh, say that, uh, oh, you know, I was applying to 
I was in this company. I was in a very senior position, but then they fired me from there. <laughs> or I did not get a job in this domain or that domain. So then what I think is the universe is indicating that even if you would have got it, that uh, you would not be in the right place. You know, that's that's what is the meaning. So when yeah. Ketu is coming, then these lessons can come. And by the end of the year, I guess all the things will be clear regarding this conjunction, you know, how it is happening. I love I love everything you say, Babiji. Uh, <laughs> it totally resonates. As they say here, uh, the rich man's heaven is the poor man's hell. And I think that's one thing that you put very importantly is that sometimes we think we're gaining something but is that yeah. really good is that really beneficial a lot of times with strong uh porvashada um natives um they have a they're in they're invincible yes and and, and what that means is they get whatever they want okay. but as i mentioned dictators have had that power so 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 there is this invincible, unconquerable energy, um, which is being activated. So, so there is definitely this energy of, uh, you know, this the, the the person may be getting what they've desired, uh, but as you mentioned, not when or how they thought they were going to get it, because uh, K two is the remover of kama, is the remover of desire. Damarta Kama Moksha. So after Kama is Moksha, which means at what you said is plans. So so our desires is also our plans. And and so K2 is here to say, okay, whatever, whatever is God's will for you, that will be thrown upon you. And this will be all the splendor and blessings that is your karma to receive. But that does not include what you want. <laughs> And what I have felt always when Ketu conjoins any planet, and this is something very interesting which I have noted, and this holds true everywhere in my experience at least, that for that time, you know, when Ketu is conjunct, like, you know, for Sun, Mercury, Venus, it will be conjunct with uh, Sun and Mercury, it's still conjunct now. With Venus, it will be conjunct after one month. So how, how I see those conjunctions as that for that period of time for these planets you know one month and for saturn maybe this year it is as if that planet has disappeared from your life <laughs> because ketu will take you take it's like saying ketu is taking that planet out of the material world so now what happens is you have all these plans regarding that planet and then suddenly you open the door one day and then this is a Oh, you thought you were going to have a board meeting with 20 CEOs tomorrow morning? Oh, but there's no company. I mean, that was a dream which you were having. <laughs> so whenever Ketu conjuncts any planet in transit, I have seen till, till that time of conjunction, it is a great time for us to uh, be realistic in assessing what, what will happen in our life if one day that thing is taken away from us completely. So, for example, somebody is a Leo ascendant, for example. So now Saturn is ruling which houses for Leo? It's primarily ruling the seventh and the sixth houses. So seventh house has Aquarius, which is the Multricorn sign. So for the Leos, they can have this feeling that uh, what life can be without a relationship sometimes. Because Ketu is the ultimate significator of, you know, uh, it's the significator of Moksha. And Moksha in a, at a preliminary level is... Uh, things are taken away from you or you go away from them either ways you know <laughs> so this does not mean that uh, if Saturn is ruling your seventh like for Leo and Cancer that you will have some separation or something I am not saying that what I am saying is you can get an experience of what is it like to stay without the seventh house <laughs> because one day there will be one day in your life when none of the houses will exist <laughs> All the houses are going to dissolve, you know, and then the eighth house will get active. And that is why they say that Ketu rules Scorpio. You know, because when that house gets activated, no other house can sustain. And that's the funny thing that the planet which rules the Lagna, Mars, also rules the eighth house. So when you are dying, what is happening actually? Just the body is changing. The Atma is not changing. The fifth house is not changing. You know? 
you 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 are primarily the atma the lagna is the body that is not changing but the body is definitely dissolving and you are getting a new body so these transits are amazing times to see that what if once upon a time these things are not there at all completely in my life then will i be able to survive in this world can i stay in this world can i be happy without those things if the answer is no then this these transits i have seen posing difficulty and challenges and that is why they say that ketu is a malefic although it is actually a great benefic in that sense because most of the times when we are in this material world we want everything <laughs> you know we want the second house we should have good food family third house fourth house we want a great car we want great children great marriage so there is probably no house in the horoscope which we do not want you know <laughs> and when the idea that we have to live without that house can be very uh, challenging at times so this is why they say that ketu is a malefic but in that case for spirituality i have seen it can do wonders for you so that's like a vacuum when ketu conjoins a planet in transit i have seen it's like those two houses or that house which that planet rules gets gets nullified nullified means now you have to fill in that vacuum but the question is how do you do that you can only do using spiritual practices yeah, yeah and especially when ketu is conjunct for such long time you know it's highly essential and i, I would uh, suggest to whoever is seeing and many people have asked me for mantras also regarding this transit so i would say uh, you can chant the mm. vaman avatars mantra you know om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya that you can chant because it's in sagittarius and you can also chant om namo narayanaya these two mantras every day you know 108 times because the, these these will help greatly you know one will do the cleansing one will give you the direction so that that's going to help us so then we can see that that vacuum which is there which ketu is creating are we able to fill it or not you know and if no is the answer then we will have challenges but if we are okay with doing spiritual practices at the same time having that vacuum then nothing can happen in this transit you know it it will just come and you will pass <laughs> yeah yeah one one thing that totally just you know all this you know uh activation as far as thinking and i always like to give the conjunctions uh different personified names and this has been done with many astrologers in india and they call saturn and kate to one of the guru's curse i do not like guru's curse i think that is a bad nickname i like to use for saturn kate to the bounty hunter the okay <laughs> if if you don't mind can we just do it in the next next part this is some interesting thing which you are saying yeah yeah okay we'll see each other in next part okay